This is an overview of an article entitled Birth Weight, Type 2 Diabetes, and Cardiovascular Disease, addressing the Barker hypothesis with Mendelian randomization, published in the June 2018 issue of Circulation, Genomic, and Precision Medicine. The focus of the paper under discussion is on establishing causal relationships between birth weight and cardiometabolic outcomes using data from large-scale human studies. The Barker hypothesis states that low birth weight, which may result from suboptimal conditions in utero, causes hypertension, diabetes, and heart disease later in life. As shown on the slide, it posits that the placenta acts to relay signals about the outside world to the fetus preparing it for whatever environment affects the mother. The low birth weight phenotype initially may serve as an adaptation to the conditions into which the fetus is born, but it can also be deleterious if the conditions of abundance later in life do not match the expectations of scarcity for which the adaptation occurred. Of course, there are many environmental and genetic variables that play into this relationship between intrauterine conditions and later risk for disease. In this diagram, the postulated causal relationships are in green, and relationships that could bias the estimates of effect in which we're interested are in red. This diagram is exceedingly complex, and that's with the exclusion of some important causal contributors such as genetic variants. This complexity makes causal inference rather challenging. Mindful of these challenges, the authors of the paper under discussion first conducted an observational study in a large-scale UK biobank cohort, with the sample size exceeding 230,000 individuals, carefully adjusting for some of the confounders shown on the previous diagram. But since even the most thoughtful adjustment cannot exclude bias due to residual confounding, they also implemented a Mendelian randomization study to better approach estimates of causal effects. That study was done in both UK Biobank and also in data from various large-scale genetic consortia of cardiovascular and metabolic disease. A few words here about this paradigm of Mendelian randomization. It's a form of instrumental variable analysis that considers genotypes, which are randomly allocated at conception, as proxy variables for the given phenotype, in this case, birth weight. Then, instead of simply testing the association between birth weight and cardiovascular disease, and worrying about unmeasured confounders and reverse causation and other threats to causality, one can test the association between the birth weight determining genotype and the cardiometabolic outcome of interest. This approach eliminates the possibility of reverse causality, since the genotype assignment always precedes disease onset, and it also takes care of residual confounding via random assignment to a particular genotype. As a result, the resulting estimate of association tends to be a more reliable causal estimate compared to observational findings. One caveat about Mendelian randomization is that the validity of its estimates is predicated on three critical assumptions. First, the genetic variant or variants that one is planning to use as the exposure must be robustly associated with the quantity it is supposed to represent, in this case, birth weight. In the paper under discussion, the main analysis included an instrumental variable consisting of up to 46 single nucleotide polymorphisms, or SNPs, previously known to be associated with birth weight. Second, the genetic variable cannot be directly associated with any potential confounders of the relationship between the exposure and the outcome, which includes unmeasured confounders. Note in this diagram that confounders have to cause the outcome but they can be spuriously associated with exposure and still bias the resulting estimate. This is harder to verify empirically, but the random assignment of the genotype, in theory, ensures there's no causal path leading to the confounders, 
if the randomization worked as intended. Finally, the genetic proxy variable cannot be associated with the outcome other than through its effects on birth weight. That third assumption precludes any pleiotropic effects of the chosen variants. The authors tested this assumption using the now standard method of Egger regression and did not see evidence that it was a big threat in the study. Additionally, the authors undertook a number of sensitivity analyses to maximize statistical power and maximize the chances of satisfying these assumptions. In this figure, we see Mendelian randomization estimates of the causal effect of birth weight on a variety of intermediate cardiovascular outcomes. From top to bottom, these included systolic and diastolic blood pressure, body mass index, waist to hip ratio, high and low density lipoprotein cholesterol, triglycerides, and measures of glucose and insulin. Each outcome was modeled using inverse variance weighted models. For most outcomes, the effect was close to zero, but for BMI, LDL cholesterol, and glucose, the effect was statistically significant. Higher birth weight was shown to cause higher BMI, but lower LDL cholesterol and lower glucose. Here's a similar plot for binary endpoints, specifically coronary artery disease, atrial fibrillation, ischemic stroke, and type 2 diabetes. There's evidence of significant causal effects on coronary artery disease and diabetes, and these effects were negative, meaning higher birth weight implied lower risk. Here's a comparison of the observational findings and the Mendelian randomization findings. They are consistent for the traits that are in bold, but Mendelian randomization gives more confidence in the causal interpretation of these effects. In summary, the authors used a variety of approaches to establish evidence of causal effects of self-reported birth weight on the risk of coronary artery disease, type 2 diabetes, and alterations in lipid and glucose metabolism. This gives credence to Barker's hypothesis, although one would be remiss if one did not also note the long list of null associations found in the study. What is interesting is that this work showed that the effect of intrauterine growth restriction is not mediated by adult obesity, but rather represents a direct etiologic effect on cardiovascular and metabolic health. This study offered a rigorous analytic approach and an unprecedented sample size, advancing our understanding of developmental origins of disease.